So the next rabbit hole that we're gonna run down is finding backgrounds. So this process, if I have everything pre out and drawn and selected, then I know what I'm gonna do. I've already shot, maybe I have got, come up with the concept, then shot the background plates, and then shot in the studio. And so then everything falls together really, really quickly. In this case here, I, I'm picking stuff from my library over stuff that I've shot over six years. So this process can take a little bit to find, okay, this is the right camera angle, this is the right lens, this is, this is starting to fit nicely. And then other times, I mean, it just takes work, it just takes some time. So uh, I've been selecting some images here. Uh, this one here I think is nice. Um, the angle is shot from standing, which could be kind of weird because you can see some of the ground here. So I'm not really sure if this is gonna work because what can happen um, with perspective and I see this happening a lot, is if you see what the way someone's standing, so we're, we don't have his feet in this image, but if you see the way someone's standing, if you're really good with perspective, you'll sometimes see that the ground would be going through somebody's knees or their calves or their thighs, and it looks kind of strange. It's really popular in advertising, and admittedly, if that's all you're trying to do, I mean, it creates eye-catching eye images, but I tend to try to go for as close to real as I can with subjects that don't look real at all. So the reason why I've selected this one, I'm gonna go Control A, Control C. So we're gonna copy it and paste it over top. And so the reason I've selected this one, I'm putting it on overlay so I can see what's going on, is because of the light direction here. So I'm gonna flip this piece of forest and see if I like it. And it's not really talking to me. I think there's some good things about it. So if I was to line up the perspective on this, realistically, it would look something like this. And I don't have more footage to fill up these trees. I don't really want to stamp them in. I don't really want to draw them in. It's going to take more time. I can probably just replace it with something else. So although this isn't a bad choice, uh, I think that there's better. So I'm going to hide this one for now. I'm just going to close this guy because I don't need it. And let's see what else we have here on my hard drive. I have this other forest picture here. Let's have a look. I think I'm going to run into the same problem. So when I shot these, clearly I shot these from standing. He's been photographed from a low angle looking up. So this is not going to work. I don't even have to open it. I'm just going to say no. I think what'll look better with this is something that is shot with a lot of compression, so a longer lens, maybe something that was further away can add things in to the background that appear to be far away. So it kind of, um, it'll have a little bit of like a postery effect. Um, I think it'll just, it'll suit nicely because he doesn't have a ton of distortion right now. He was not shot with a wide angle lens. And although I can get away with it with some images, I don't know. I'm gonna try something here first with this. So I'm gonna open up, I have some mountain stock sticking here, but I'm gonna to have to stitch it. So I'm gonna not, I'm not going to increase clarity on this. The reason for that is that this was shot with a 135 or 100 mil lens by the looks of it, looking at the compression between these two mountains. So. I don't want to add more clarity because in reality, it would be quite far away from him. So adding clarity would be distracting and it would not necessarily add to the realism of the shot. So I'm going to go open image. And I want these mountains to be a little bit lower. So I'm going to stitch when I was shooting, when I go out and shoot mountain tops, I am usually handheld because oftentimes having a tripod in, in certain parks uh, is not necessarily allowed. Uh, so. I'm just gonna, basically, when I'm out shooting, I just hold up my camera to go tick, 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 tick. And I find a focus point and I lock in the focus and then I just like photograph those background pieces. So, especially for images that are going to be slightly far away or quite far away, I'm okay with them not being completely perfect. So these are two images that I took in sequence. I actually shot the entire range of mountains, but I think these two will work. I'm just gonna grab my crop tool and expand the canvas. Going to get off of crop of this. 
copy that one over. And so now there's lots of different ways to stitch and stitching can be super fun, especially for people who are really, really, really into doing landscape photography. But there's always the question of how do you line it up? So here we're looking at this and there's gonna be a little lens distortion, probably, it's probably not gonna be perfect, probably. Uh, but there's this really cool blending mode that I learned from a landscape workshop that I took a long time ago. And there's this blending mode called difference. And I never understood the use for difference. For me, it was always kind of this like worthless tool. But then I saw this landscape photographer named Eric use it to line up his images when he was stitching. And so now I can see, and I'm looking at this, when this is off, it's very clear. But I'm just basically hit the move tool. And it looks pretty, pretty close. So I'm gonna hit, put this back to normal. So we can see here, there's like a little bit of differences here and that's gonna happen with the lens. I'll probably just put my subject in front of that seam line, but I'm gonna mask out the line just so it's not obvious. With digital art, it's always the question of what can we get away with that nobody's gonna notice. And if this was printed up really big, probably somebody would notice, but if I play my cards right, I can put the subject in front of that seam and so it's not gonna matter anyways. So I'm gonna crop this back in. I'm gonna flatten it. I'm gonna go Control or Command E. Copy it over and paste it. So I often use blending modes, especially when I am trying to figure out where I'm gonna put things. Just because then I can loosely see what's going on. 